I'm reading to you <coughs> from the authorized version of the scriptures. <coughs> Still not out of the woods yet, brethren. And uh, I got to tell you, your servant is a little um, cranky today. A little cranky, just so you know. Okay? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me in the scriptures. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me. Okay, you know why? Because I make mistakes. I'm a fallible man. I make mistakes. Don't trust me. Trust this. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Trust this. Don't trust me. Don't trust what I say. Trust what the scripture saith. Okay? Fact check me according to scripture. Okay? I'm a little cranky today. Not over the sickness and the couple that lives together gets sick together. So, <laughs> anyway. Psalm 119, Mem. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Wait, you don't know where Mem is, huh? I tell you, the headings in Psalm 119, learn how to decipher, learn how to identify in Psalm 119 via the headings. Mem. Oh, how, I, how love I thy law, it is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. Mm. We see law, testimonies, and meditation. Law. Testimony. Meditating. Not this uh, uh, stuff. Uh, but... Um, Praying about what you read, reading the scriptures, taking the scriptures in to your heart. All right? And I have more understanding than all my teachers, inferring that the teachers, to whomever the psalmist is referring to, didn't what? Meditate on the testimonies didn't delight themselves in the law. Hmm. Remember, this was written under the dispensation of the law. But instructing in righteousness, obviously, of course. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Keep them. Where? Here. Again, refer the reference on to that the ancients didn't. I have refrained my feet from every evil way. Go not to the right nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Okay? Walk straight. Okay? I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments. For thou hast taught me. How does the Lord teach you? Oh, there are many ways he teaches you but primarily the Holy Ghost. And he will guide you into all truth, and the Holy Ghost will guide you into Scripture. And, the, and God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Ghost that dwells within you, saint, is not going to contradict his word. 
Okay? There are many ways the Lord teaches, but this is how he primarily teaches. Oh, he teaches through pain, through suffering, through many means. But pain is always usually the one that uh, he does. Why? Because that's the way we get it. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding departing from evil. Therefore I hate. I hate every false way. I hate Catholicism. I hate free grace. Again, thousand dollar challenge. Show me verbatim in the scripture. Come on there, sweetie pie. Free grace. Show it to me. Show it to me. Free grace. Show it to me. Come on. Freely by his grace. Yes. Free grace. Uh, nay, nay. Okay? I hate every false way. Do I hate the Catholic? No. Do I hate the free grace adherent? Uh, no. Some of them really, really uh, teeter-totter on there. <laughs> but no. Do I hate the Muslim? No. Do I hate the Calvinist? No. Do I hate Calvinism? Yes. Do I hate Islam? Yes. Do I hate Buddhism? Oh, you better believe it. Do I hate Shintoism? Yes. Shall we go on the line? Do I hate the Shintoist? No. But I hate every false way. Why? Because it is an abomination unto my father. Psalm 119 a. You don't know where to find that yet, huh? I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Be surety for thy... Be surety for thy servant for good. There is none good but God. Let not the proud oppress me. The proud. Oh, like the Catholic who boast themselves because they've done this, 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 this. The Pentecostal because they've seen God. <laughs> or they speak in tongues. Or these idiots who say that they've stopped sinning. The antinomian is free grace, easy believe a scum who save themselves by their own belief and live by their own standard. You heard me right. Told you I'm a little cranky today. Be sure to for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according to, unto thy mercy, and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant, give me understanding, that I, may, that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. Remember, you've got to rightly divide the word of truth. This was uh, written under the law. And the doctrine under the law, the thing of the law was, it was by faith and works. It is not by grace through faith from the beginning unto the end. It is not. That is so easily proven that it is not that way. 
But see, the problem is, and we are going to look at this. We are going to watch today a nine-minute video that a brother, a dear saint, sent to, uh, to me um, of a grotesque example of free grace, easy believism. I hate easy believers. I hate free grace. Your grace that you offer is not the grace of God. It is a license to sin. It is of the devil. Okay? It is not the grace of God that these devils offer you. All right? And these people, like this young devil that we are going to look at today, um, his channel is needgod.net. Okay? I don't know what the kid's name is. He, he's a boy. He just a little baby boy who needs to keep his mouth shut. All right? I don't know what the kid's name is. I don't care. He's evil. And he's being used of the devil to make nothing but false converts, to make twofold more the child of hell than them himself. Okay? Again, free grace, easy believism, in my honest opinion, is the most dangerous heresy that there is today. And you're going to see why I believe that. But let's finish in, let's finish up here in Psalm 119 AN. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. All things to be right according to what? The testimonies, the precepts, the judgments, the law. Of God not what we come up with out of our own minds like the antinomianist devil does therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right and that should be self-explanatory right there and I hate every false way First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man of uh, verses 1 on to verse 5. We're chewing cabbage today, brethren, but you gotta remember. Christians don't know this stuff. They don't. And you are going to see scriptural ignorance personified. And you're going to see an example of how these devils do it. Okay? Now there are, there are degrees here with these easy believers scum. I'm not being kind. I'm not being polite. You guys are scum. You guys are devils. You are leading people to hell. Okay? You're liars there, sweetheart. All right? And I hope the Lord shuts you up. But see, this is their time. And the power of darkness. People don't want truth. They don't want to hear truth. And as you're going to see, the smooth, subtle little kid guiding some imbecile to hell. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful to the Lord. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Now, look at that verse. Look at the verse. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, mankind. Okay? Alright? Or of man's judgment, 
Yea, I judge not mine own self. Man's judgment by itself is flawed. We get close sometimes to proper judgment, yes, but ultimately it is flawed. Why? Because of the Garden of Eden. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. God is the only one who truly knows what is truly good and what is truly evil. We can get close to that. Yes, we can. But man's judgment in and of itself outside of the Lord Jesus Christ and his perfect standard, the authorized version, is flawed. Is flawed. So Paul says, I judge not mine own self. Why? Because of his own self, his own judgment, he could find a loophole. He could justify anything. Because he knew that his judgment in and of itself was flawed. <coughs> That's what Romans 2 is about. Okay, Romans chapter 2. That's what that's about. You got two lost people judging themselves by their own standard because they themselves are their own standard. See, we need God and his perfect standard in order to begin to know and have perfect judgment. God is perfect and errant. Yes, he is. His word is perfect and errant, given by inspiration. This is the perfect standard, wherewith we judge ourselves first. And because we judge ourselves first, by this standard, I judge you. I judge you. Because his precepts, his testimony, his judgments are perfect. And I judge myself first by this standard. Therefore, I judge you. But see, apart from the Father that dwells within the saint, apart from the perfect standard, man's judgment is flawed. And ultimately, in the longevity, not to be trusted. Because it could be influenced. For I am, verse 4 explains verse 3. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me... <laughs> is the Lord. How does the Lord judge us? By a perfect standard. The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, judges us by this word. The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? That is why it is evil, heresy, wicked, and we can go on and on, when you hear these stupid Christians utter the statement, only God can judge me. You can't judge me. Yes, I can. You know why? Number one, I'm saved. Number two, I have a perfect standard. Number three, I judge myself first by this perfect standard. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. But since I actively judge myself by this standard, oh, I get to judge you by the same standard. Okay? So when you hear these stupid 
Christians say, only God can judge me. He does. Through the scripture. And see, when a stupid Christian utters, only God can judge me, they don't want to be judged. They're afraid of judgment. Why? Because mark my word, dear friend, every single time they're trying to justify something that deep in their heart they know God hates. Without exception. And thus, the easy believest, free grace, antinomianist scum come along and weave their way in in this context. Verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time. Oh, so we're not supposed to judge at all. But yet, <laughs> again, uh, uh, have you read 1 Corinthians 6? Okay? Christians will have you judge nothing so that they could get away with everything. Just like the antinomianist, free grace, easy believest, devil pond scum does. But let's keep reading the verse. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Now this is not a reference onto the second coming. This is a reference onto getting saved by the Lord. By His grace through our faith. Okay? This is a meaning until the Lord come who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts and then shall every man have praise of God. Again, Romans 2. Romans 2. Okay? What this is saying is judge nothing before the time, meaning Romans 2. Yeah, there. Therefore, uh, let's uh, read verses 1 under verse 4. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Romans 1, Romans 2, and Romans 3 are there written, on, written in the way they are so that you lost people can easily understand what God is saying to you. Okay? This is why the free grace devil avoids Romans 1, Romans 2, and when they get to Romans 3, they love Romans 3. But they always, usually, usually, they vary in this. But they usually begin somewhere in between Romans 3, 21. And the farthest they will go is Romans 26. But they, they stay within this one boundary of Romans 3, 23, on to 26 only. And you see, and you're going to see this with this kid we're going to look at today. What they omit, what they don't say, is the important thing. Okay? So, in Romans 2, coming off of Romans 1, the Lord is pleading with you in Romans 1. And remember, plead scripturally is not this, oh, oh, oh please, no. It's uh, you're guilty, you're going to hell, and unless the Lord save you, you go the way of the cross, get broken of that self-righteousness of yours, be a man, and fess up, and take responsibility, quit pointing the finger at other people, and have the hell scared out of you, unless he save you. The way of the cross that he elected, guess what? You're going to hell. And see, the easy believest is a thief and a robber. They boot the door, and Jesus Christ is the door genius, and they boot the door out of the way, and they climb up some other way. And they make people twofold more the child of hell than themselves. I have read Romans 1 and 2, specifically, and 3. 
onto lost people. And they get you lost people. Well, I can't. Oh, yes, you can understand the authorized version of the scriptures. You just don't want to. Because the authorized version of the scriptures, I don't like to say it this way, but I'm going to, hits you different. You know why? Because this is a sword. This is a sword. This is the sword of the Spirit. And as it saith in Hebrews 4, in Hebrews 4, verse 12, this is why you lost people hate the authorized version. That's why you're rather and more inclined to go with the NIV or the ESV or the LSD, John MacArthur's version, or even the disgusting message or whatever. This is why you're willing to go to anything but the scriptures. Why? For the word of God, Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick, alive, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow. That's a person. Spirit, soul, and body. That's what a person is. We're made in the image of God. God has a spirit soul and body okay we're not gods we're made in the image of God okay so this is describing a person and is a discerner of the thoughts and and intents of the heart okay that's why people hate the authorized version of the scripture but Romans 2 again okay this is talking about off of the heels of Romans chapter 1 this is talking about two lost people with themselves as their own standard judging each other by an inadequate standard themselves. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, which judgeth them which do, do such things, and doest the same, and doest the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, knowing not that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Repentance is a turning from something, from one unto the other, from faith to faith, okay? From faith in uh, God and unto the law, okay? The law is not a faith. The law, your faith was in God, that he would honor you by doing the law. Okay? And your faith was, I did this, this, and this, and God is going to honor me because I did this. Faith and works. From faith under the law to now faith today, and it is finished. Okay? Just an example. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? All right? So, so, Two lost people having an inadequate standard of judgment, judging each other. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5, Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, until you're saved, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise of God. Okay? People like to go to this and twist this to say, you can't judge me. Uh, no, this is actually teaching you the opposite. That as a lost person, your judgment is flawed. Judge nothing until you are saved. And then once you are saved, you have the Father within you, and he will guide you on to a perfect standard of judgment. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Do you understand? Okay? All right? We are to judge ourselves. Number one, we do that daily. And number two, we are to judge others. Therefore, I hate every false way. Okay? Lost people have a problem with judgment. A saint has no problem with judgment. Why? Because we judge ourselves through the scripture. Christians have a problem with judgment. Do I need to go on with the, the uh, train there? Okay, I will. I will. There are saints out there 
who for whatever reason is going on in your little cabeza. I don't get it. There are saints out there who for whatever reason stubbornly want to hold to Christian. I don't know why you do that. I really don't, brother. Um, that that's that's your problem. Okay? That's your problem. You're an actual saint and you want to hold on to the word Christian. That's your problem. Okay? But the majority, dear friend, Christians, Christianity, Christians aren't saved. Oh. You heard me right. You heard me right. If you're saved, you're a saint. If you're saved, you're a saint. It's what the Lord calls us, saints. We're the church of God. Church of the living God. Saints. We follow the way, the truth, and the life. Who's that? Jesus Christ. And you say, well, I'm a Christian. What Christ are you talking about? Which Jesus? Which Jesus? There's only one Jesus who saves. You're right. There is only one Jesus. You're right. But see, Satan has given you a plethora of other Jesuses. Okay? In the description box, which Jesus? Which one? Okay? Which one? Satan gives you a buffet. Look at Christianity. Look at all the denominations of Christianity. Okay? Yeah, Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholic, King James Bible believing. You have uh, Presbyterian, Baptist, I already said, and so on and so on. According to Christianity, Christ is divided. Onto the saint, he is not. Okay? All right? But what is it? Um, in Jude chapter 3, I, excuse me. See, I make mistakes. Jude verses 3 on to verse 4. Jude 3 and 4. Jude doesn't have chapters. You see this? <laughs> okay. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, common to all people, God is not a respecter of persons. But, see, you talk to the Catholic. He is a respecter of persons. Uh, the Pentecostals are notorious for this. That God is a respect uh, that about the common salvation. Uh, like, you know, well, I've seen the Lord. No, you haven't. I speak in tongues. Good for you. Calvinists. You know, they're elect and non-elect. Variations of Calvinism, black Hebrew Israelites. They're, they're elect because of their skin color. Okay? Common salvation. Common to all people. It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And that ain't Christianity, pal. It's not. For there are certain men crept in unawares. I, I beg your pardon. Hmm. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, the free grace. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. See, easy believism. You save your son. And you're going to see this kid do it, say this. And you saints are going to look at this. And you're going to notice right away the omissions. But you're also going to see it's like, wow. This kid is evil. Very subtle. Okay? But see, the antinomianist. They twist things. Their faith is in their faith. Just like the name it and claim it, nab it and blab it people, 
which has its basis in metaphysical mind science, like Christian science. If you believe it, you can achieve it. Okay? You are because you think you are. You're going to see this. Okay? And, of course, most, I have yet to meet one, uh, free gracers are <laughs> one God in three persons. In the description box, I'm not even going to really waste that much time. I'm just going to put the playlists in there. Okay, the playlists refuting free grace will be in the description box. And the playlist uh, about the Trinity will also be in the description box as well. Okay? All right? All right? Free gracers are, God, are people of lasciviousness. And they deny the true Lord. All right? And what do these guys use? Oh, you listen to the Canadian talk show host. He's really good at this one. He, I mean, he is. He, he, uh, uh, I'm sure he went to a college. I'm sure he did. Uh, but uh, he's very philosophical. All these guys, all these uh, people are philosophical. Colossians 2, one verse, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not, not after Christ. And then 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 19. 2 Peter chapter 2, 17 on to 19. Free gracers. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. They're not saved. They're giving you another gospel, another Jesus. They are not saved. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, just believe and receive. God's not angry at you. Hey, prayer is a work. Prayer is a work. You're going to see this kid in a veiled way say this. Okay? Uh, calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Okay? Lost people say that. Lost people say that. Why? Because prayer, praying, you know, you praying to the Lord, calling on the name of the Lord. See, that those are required by the way. Yes, they are. And see, calling on the name of the Lord is the result of brokenness, contrition, and fear. You, once you have gone through that, and that happens and when, when you get the rug taken out from under you, boy, um, you can't wait to call on someone, someone greater than yourself. But see, the, the easy believest, they are the greater ones. Because they make a decision in their head and save themselves. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Oh, and you just were uh, reference uh, praise that he isn't that idiot. That guy's stupid. And all that fodder that follow him, okay, that justify sin, that go through that go through scripture to find loopholes to justify themselves. That guy's an idiot. That guy is stupid. Just like Jack Smack. That guy is stupid. This kid, he's stupid. Okay? But see, he's very deviant. Hey kid, you see this? I hope you do. The Lord rebuke you, you wicked devil. And I hope the Lord silences you. I really do. There has to be a working knowledge of the truth, you little punk, for you to deceive. And then again, the, the, the guy you're talking to, <laughs> bless his heart. Anyway, while they promise them liberty, hey, you saved yourself by your own belief. Don't worry about it, okay? Hey, the more you sin, 
the more grace abounds. We're not under the law, but we're under grace, so hey, don't worry about it. Hey, okay, maybe you shouldn't do certain things, but don't worry if you do. Hey, you, God's got you covered. It's all good. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And just go on living like the world with no change. You know why there's no change? Because there's no new creature in these people. And any change that comes, it's because of something they do. I found, I've mentioned this recently, I found this, um, this recovering alcoholic guy who I've listened to a, a few of his videos. Um, he's not saved. He's not a saved man. But, uh, again, I bring that up because alcoholics can have a changed life because of something they do. You're a new creature when the Lord saves you and seals you with himself. Hence, because you got the Father in you, God, the Lord didn't go change. Okay? Now at gunpoint, you have to make the right decisions. Okay? There's no new creature in the easy believest. None. They're not saved. For while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought into bondage. And like I tell you, when you read that, you go immediately to Romans chapter 6. Immediately. Make it a habit. Make it a habit. Okay? Immediately go to Romans chapter 6. And here's what the antinomianist free grace, easy believers does. What shall we say then? Verse 1. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's exactly what they do. Yeah, the more you sin, the more grace you have. What does Paul say, though? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? And dude, you listen to these guys. All there are about about sin, keeping sin. The best example of this is praise that he is. And that guy is a stupid. Hey, you ever see me? You're a stupid idiot. Okay? <laughs> All right? Lord rebuke you, dude. Okay, hey, and your buddy, dude, anyway. All right? That guy's stupid. He is a perfect example of what this is talking about. He's one of these guys, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. What does Paul say? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? Look across uh, in the, uh, in the um, verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? What does Paul say? God forbid. What is the antinomian? It's free grace, easy believers say. Shall we sin? Hey, we're not under the law, we're under grace, so don't worry about it. They've never been set free. We still sin. Yes, we do. But they don't have that true freedom. See, these are the false brethren that have snuck in unawares to spy out our saints' liberty. And they try to copy it by giving you a license to sin. Verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, servants, not slaves, not slaves, you have free will, okay? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, <coughs> whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And uh, verses 22 and 23 in Romans chapter 6. But now, made, but now being made free from sin, not sinless, but being made free from it, be, meaning... We have the Lord in us that we could go to as a refuge from sin. But see, then again you read Romans 7. Here's where the sinless perfection idiot comes around and tells you, you got to stop sinning. You can't do that. That's impossible. Okay, that's impossible. Uh, uh, on a video on that will be in the description box 
for you as well. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. And any time he called holiness garbage. <laughs> yeah. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Dude, listen to me. Anybody who calls holiness being separate than, other than, anyone calls that garbage? A oh, red flag, hello! Okay? But see, now, the easy believist, they love Romans 3. Uh, uh, Edward, uh, excuse, I'm not, excuse me, <coughs> Elmer Fudd from New York, that guy who's still alive, okay, that guy, he called the Romans road damnation, he called it the road to hell, he did, and he says that the pure gospel is in Romans 3, and now like I told you, these guys vary in what they will give you, but they omit what comes before. And here's where they usually stick to. You're going to see this. And remember, saints, just because Satan's ministers of righteousness have taken this truth and twisted it. How have they twisted it? It's what they don't give you. It's what they leave out. That's what makes it dangerous. <clears throat> this is 110% truth. Yes, it is. But see, what comes, what is the context? A con uh, text without a context is a pretext. And that we discuss <coughs> <coughs> in the Shepherd's Chapel video, which will be <coughs> Ch uh, Shepherd's Chapel video, which will be in the description box. Not that idiot Shepherd's ambassador. No, that guy's an idiot. But these guys vary in where they start, but they always include these three verses. Romans 3, 23 on to verse 26. Okay? For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. That is absolutely 110% categorical, undeniable truth. Amen. Amen. All have sinned. That's true. Amen. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, the death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the cross, absolutely, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare his, to, to, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and a justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Now, that is absolute truth. Yes, it is. But see, what are you not being told? You go to you go to some dude on the street with this. All have sinned. They're like, well, yeah, it sounds good. But what's missing? What's missing? Now, with that. Here's this kid's channel. All right? Need God Net. I can't see if there's a dot there. Uh, but Need God Net. Like I said, a, a brother, a dear saint uh, of ours, uh, you know, a dear saint sent this to me about this kid, okay? Um, and, and thankfully, he doesn't have an intro video. But, uh, and the, the link for the video, sweetheart, will be in the description box for you so you can see it yourself, okay? All right? Just so, you know, just be fair there. 
But this is the video that I was sent by this stupid little kid. And I don't know who this little kid is. Can you see this? The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. And I hope the Lord shuts you up. You're a teaching heresy. You're leading people unto hell. And this video, you're going to see this. Now, you saints, we're going to watch this whole video. We're going to make some stops along the way. I'm going to make some comments along the way. Okay? What? With, with the free grace adherent, <clears throat> it's always what they aren't telling you. <clears throat> because, remember, they are using the truth deceitfully. Romans 3, 23 on to verse 26 is absolute truth. Yes, but what comes before that, what they are leaving out is the necessary ingredient to salvation. Now, with that said, here is this kid. And of course he's monetized. Hi, Mark Barton at Sandy Hook Promise oh, here. Shut up. When the gunman shot his way... Be quiet. Bro. Oh, bro, I love, I love this brother, bro. Oh, <laughs> That's so good. Hey, bro, can I ask you a okay, question? Okay, now, yeah, now, right away. Right away. Bro! <laughs> okay, now, I'm going to let this speak for itself. Okay, now, watch this. That, that kid, I don't know how old that is. He looks like he's 12. This guy on the right, uh, he looks not supposed to judge him according to the parents. I get that, but... I'm just guessing, dude, bro. I, I'm guessing he would probably qualify as a stoner. I'm sorry, but okay, let, okay, let's let's go on. Come on. Hey man, what you say? I like it. Look at that fireworks, bro. <laughs> Can I ask you? Do you believe in God? Yeah, bro. I believe in yeah everything. I believe in everything he says. Like I said, I'm I'm stopping it. The link will be in the description box for you. Okay? And he's like, yeah, I believe in everything. Everything's good. It's like, yeah, I believe in God. The devils also, thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? Think about everything. Right. And so, therefore, would you agree that God can set the rules for how we should live while we're here? Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah. Hey, kid, what are those rules? Where do we find those rules? What are those rules? And so then after we die, it'd be reasonable to say that he can judge us then based on how we've lived. So would you say you've been a good person? Yes, but no. no okay. Yeah. All right. Well, for example, I'll give me an example. Have you ever told a lie before? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Sure, bro. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever used bad language? Yeah. Or even this. Have you ever... Now, that approach, Ray Comfort does this, that is it. Okay, now, now think about this. Okay, have you ever lied? Have you ever used bad language? Of course. For all have sinned. Everybody has done that, right? Okay? Okay? Right away. Now, is that approach in and of itself a wrong, bad way to do it? There are better... There are better ways, <clears throat> okay? There are better ways uh, to go about that. Uh, that. That, personally, I mean, I have done, of course I have. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you think you're good, huh? Yeah, I'm sure you've lied before. It's like, of course, so have you. It's like, yeah, I, I have. But I generally, personally, in witnessing, I don't start out like that. I go right for the juggler. I go right for the juggler. You ain't a good person, dude. Okay? I go right for the juggler. Okay? But see, in the way he did that, okay, is there anything inherently wrong with that approach? No. There are better ways to go about it, though. That's what I'm saying. Okay? That's all I'm saying. All right? But see, in the way he did that, it's like, you know, and he's like, yeah, I've done it too. Okay? Everybody has done that. Okay? Well, let's continue. Ever been angry or rude to someone? Yeah. Right. So if God was to judge you based on... Now, he said about, have you ever been angry? Okay? And see, now that tells me right there that this, obviously, this kid isn't using the scriptures, but a Bible. 
Okay, because in the Bibles, they take out uh, whosoever is angry at his brother, they take out without a cause is in danger of hellfire. I, I just brandized that. But the point is, the Bibles take out without a cause. So who is ever, whosoever is angry at his brother is in danger of judgment. They take out without a cause. And this kid just went off on that premise. It's like, have you ever been angry? Meaning, at the scriptures say, be ye angry and sin not. So that tells me this kid doesn't use the scriptures. Okay? <coughs> Let's continue. <clears throat> on these things, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? Guilty, bro. Guilty. Right. Yeah, sure. so being guilty, do you deserve to be rewarded or punished? Depends on your actions, bro. You know what I mean? Like, okay. All right. So our actions are already seem to be guilty, though, right? Yeah. So if we're broken yeah. God's law, we should get his punishment, wouldn't you say? Yeah, no, for sure, bro. You can't escape the con consequences of the actions, right. bro, no matter what. Sounds good, right? You can't escape the consequences, right? That guy on the right is at least headed into the right direction there. Watch this. Did this, this, hey kid, you little devil, you cutie pie. Look at you, little sweetie pie. Okay, the Lord rebuke you, you filthy lying little scum. The Lord rebuke you, kid. You, ooh, that kid's smooth. This kid, this kid reminds me of Mr. Fig. Okay. Minds me also of a lot of, minds me of the Canadian talk show host, too. Very smooth. Let's continue. You know, bro, like, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, I agree. And so no, the no. punish, but the punishment then doesn't sound like heaven. Wouldn't it sound like hell? No, yeah, no. Right. Know, bro, yeah. So what could we do at this point so we don't have to go to hell? It's a hard one. It is a hard one, isn't it? Yeah. And well, right, hard one. <laughs> that's all right. I, I don't think there's anything we can do because even if we changed our behavior from now on, would that fix the past sins that we've done? No, but you can't no, change the past. Right? Yeah, you, you, yeah. you can't change the past. See, now he's speaking right. Look at that. Look at that smile. I know some of you are with the creepy smile, but look at that. Look at that. Look at those dead eyes that that kid has. Kid's a devil. Whatever your name is, kid, Lord rebuke you. Lord rebuke you. Okay? But, it sounds good, right? And hey, we just all of a sudden start changing the way we do things apart from what? It's vanity. Right, exactly. So I don't think changing is a solution. Neither is asking forgiveness, because that doesn't clear it either. Asking for forgiveness doesn't clear it either. Did you catch that? Right, exactly. So I don't think changing is a solution. Neither is asking forgiveness, because that doesn't clear it either. Did you catch it? Oh, calling on the name of the Lord is a work? Asking for forgiveness is a work? Praying is a work? Well, we're in Romans, and we, we've covered this, we've covered this, okay, even Jake the Jerk got this one right, okay, uh, Romans 10, verses 9 on to verse 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay? We read that specifically because the scripture, you know, and like I said, when you are broken of your self-righteousness and take responsibility, personal accountability for you personally putting the Lord on the cross and having the house scared out of you, you can't wait. Lord, save me. Okay? You see what this kid did? But there is still a way to get to heaven. Do you want to hear it? 
So what we would need is we'd need someone who would be kind enough to take our hell punishment on our behalf. True. Because if someone does take 100% of your punishment, how much punishment is left for you to get? Like if someone took all of it, every bit of it away, how much is left over? None. None. Now, that is true in eternally. Eternally. But see, that right there. That right there. This is this is classic sleazy believism. That right there. The false premise. You, you know, well, what's left for you? But see, you heard earlier that stoner dude on the right there. He's like the consequences of the actions. Now, eternally, okay, I'm forgiven of all my sins. Absolutely. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. My Past, present, and future sins are forgiven in him. Amen. But that doesn't remove the consequences here, like bad health, memories, okay? Things from the past catching up from you doesn't automatically remove those, okay? That's a line that these devils like to blur. And when they lead these people into a false salvation a it's not a real salvation a false sense of security and then something from the past comes back to backlash them it's like i thought i was forgiven of all this stuff i thought all this stuff wasn't gonna come and see how that works see why this is so evil okay eternally you go the way of the cross broken contrite fear the lord get the hell scared out of you 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 can't wait the Lord, save me. He saves you and seals you. Once saved, always saved, eternally secure. Amen. 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 Okay, amen. But that doesn't remove the temporal consequences all the time of your sins. I'm paying for the sins of my youth when I was a lost man. And physically and also mentally with memory and stuff like that. Okay? Very shady, very wicked thing that these guys do. And this kid's right and look at that, that evil. Oh. Yeah. They, they sacrifice himself for you. Yeah, yeah. And that was Jesus, wasn't it? It was why he died. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Which Jesus, kid? Which Jesus? And now, have you saints noticed so far what hasn't, what is lacking, what hasn't been said yet? Have you noticed these things? Saints have, but let's continue. No. <laughs> That's no, why you did it. Bro, that was wet. That was wet, bro. That was wet. <laughs> now, if Jesus does that for you, then, bro, he takes your punishment. Where will where will God be able to send you when you die? Heaven. Yeah, so why do you get to go to heaven? Because Jesus died for our sins, bro. That's the reason. Good job. No, no, wait, that wasn't wet, bro. You, nah, bro. Become a scripture teacher or something, bro. Oh, my day. <laughs> no, kid. This guy is not a scripture teacher. This guy is a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's a devil, kid. Okay? You're, you, you're kind of lacking in your brains there, buddy. Sorry, somebody got to tell you. You got fooled by this kid. Okay, this guy is not a scriptural teacher. He's a devil. Okay, he's a devil. All right. Ugh. That's so funny. Now we just have to accept his gift. The way we do it is just by trusting in our mind that the re reason we're going to heaven is only because he died for us, and not because of any good things that we do. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it does. So let's say. Okay. Let's rewind that a little bit. Mental decision. Free grace. I save myself because I just believe. You're walking down the road and you flip a switch in your head and see it stays here. It doesn't go down. 
baby. <laughs> That's so funny. Now, we just have to accept his gift. The way we do it is just by trusting in our mind that the reason we're going to heaven is only because he died for us and not because of any good things that we do. So, just believe in your mind. Metaphysical mind science. Believe and receive. And these are young guys. I, I'm, I'm guessing that these guys aren't out of their 20s yet. I, I'd be surprised if this punk on the left was uh, in his 30s. I, I really would. I, evil. But I would not. I mean, these guys are in their 20s. And, th and see, this is Christianity. Not all of it. You got Pentecostalism. You got King James Bible believing. Okay. They differ. But th this is general Christianity. And we wonder why. And we wonder, don't we, brother? Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. No, don't. So let's say today you do trust that he's done that for you. But then tomorrow you do five more bad things and then you died. Would you go to heaven or hell? Heaven. I go to heaven. I'm just going to say heaven. You're right. And James why is did not for our sin. You got it, man. And he dies for your future sins as well yeah. as your past ones, right? Okay. Bro. But... Oh, bro. I love, I love this problem, bro. Oh, <laughs> That's so good. Now, what if you don't trust that he died for you, though? Where do you end up? Hell. Yeah, and so since you don't want to go to hell, when should you start trusting that he died for your sins? Every day. Every day, Every day. yeah. Absolutely. From today, are you going to trust that that's the reason you're going oh, to heaven? Yeah. Oh, for sure, man. Good. Now, see, he's pointing to a Richling-esque <coughs> continued belief. Like, you have to continually, continually believe. Faith in the actual faith itself. Okay? That's what uh, the Canadian talk show host's teacher uh, d did. That was one of his big things. You had to continually believe. Okay? Why? Your faith was in your faith. Very veiled. Okay? And, and, then, and I got to, I, I feel, I do. I feel bad for the kid on the right. Uh, he, whoever this kid is on the right, I feel bad for him. He is stupid. Okay, he is. But he, he's just being led along like a rat to a trap. Okay, like to a, a, a goat to the slaughter. Okay, by this smiling, wicked little devil pond scum. All right. All right. And, and to refute this little sweetheart devil, look, look at that face. Look at those eyes. Look at those kids' eyes. That's that don't that kid's devil possessed, dude. Look at that. Look at that. That's creepy. <laughs> okay. Um 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 11 on to verse 13. Okay? It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead to what? Dead to that. Dead to ourselves. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, will, he also will deny us. Now that's not talking about salvation. You go the way of the cross, the way he has prescribed, the way he has elected, and he saves you, he seals you, eternally secure, once saved, always saved. Okay? It's not talking about salvation. You deny to live according to the way he wants us, according to scripture. You deny him in the presence of other people. You deny, you can, he can deny you in so many other things. He can deny you in grace. He can deny you in mercy, provision, health, fellowship. But he won't deny salvation because it's not your salvation. Prove that to you. Absolutely. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. We are of his house because he seals us with himself. We are of his bones and of his flesh. Okay? Alright? So, 
We have a lapse in faith. Does that mean we're lost? No. 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 And again, look at that kid's face. Look at those eyes. Wow. Dude, you talk about, yeah, somebody out there ought to take the exorcist picture and transpose it on that kid's face. That kid looks like that girl from the exorcist right there. That creepy, man. Okay. Okay, that's creepy. So if you stood before God today and he asked you, why should I let you into heaven? What would you say to him? He is not for our sins. Spot on. Past and present. Yeah. And you, he could say to you, welcome to heaven. All of your sins are being paid for in full. Bra so, does, so does doing good things have any part in getting you to heaven? No. no. You're right. Nothing just, does. Bro. Yeah, none of our actions. Now, we still do good things and we avoid oh, sin yeah. to say thank you to Jesus for what he's done, but we don't do it to yeah. get ourselves to heaven. That's right? true. And so out of a hundred, how sure are you right now that you'll go to heaven when you die? 100%, bro. That's so good. That must be so encouraging knowing that now. Why, though? Why? Because he makes a mental decision. Hey, hey, saints, you've already noticed what's been, what's missing here. You've already noticed. Okay? You've already noticed. But you, you other people out there, okay? It's in his head. It's in his head. It hasn't made the descent to hear the heart. Now, right? Oh, yeah. Facts, bro. No, facts. <laughs> That's good. Now, let me ask you, what if a friend says to you that he's going to heaven because he's a good person? Would that friend go to heaven or hell? I guess I'd have to explain it to him, bro. Like, like right. this, yeah. You would, because like, if he died in thinking he's going to heaven because he's a good person, where does he yeah. end up? Yeah. Where Where does he end up? Heaven or hell? If he's trusting in his own actions to save him? Hell. And see, okay, but see what this kid did? Mental decision, own actions. Okay, this is easy believism. <coughs> he. he Right here, you make a mental decision, and you're saved. You save yourself by your own belief. Do you see it? Okay? Do you? Hey, you talk about hypocrisy, okay? All right? Easy believism is works salvation. Okay? Why? Because you are the saving agent and your faith is in your faith yourself. Even though he's like, hey, that he died for us, but your faith is in your faith. You see? You see how they... And see, this, this kid is slick, man. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, look at them eyes. Look at those eyes. Oh, that, that, that creepy. <laughs> I don't fret men, but if I were to come across that face in an alley, it'd be like, whoa, <laughs> you better get out of here, boy. <laughs> you know, you better get out of here. you asking for trouble, boy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're right. Because he doesn't have Jesus. His trust is in the wrong thing. So he Which Jesus? Jesus? Yeah. Trust in God. Right. Which one? Because if we trust in ourselves, we pay for our own sins. But what if... Make a mental decision. You trust in your own self. Do you see it, people? Do you see it? Do you see it? Someone, what if someone was to trust in both Jesus and their own good actions to go to heaven? Where would they end up? <coughs> I think God would question them, you know? Okay. Now, by trusting in two things, is the person trusting 100% in Jesus or only 50%? Revelation! Revelation! Trusting in Jesus and in works. Oh, you mean faith and works like it was under the law? Faith and works 
Like it will be during the time of Jacob's trouble. Hmm. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, uh, verse uh, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. And the faith of Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, today, today, we don't have to, it's not faith and works today. No, it's by His grace through faith. But see, Him bringing that up, see, He's not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? He's not rightly dividing the word of truth. Him bringing it up specifically that way. Okay? Let's, let's go back to that. Let's go back just a bit. Let's go back just a bit. Okay? Listen to that. Listen. I can go with question. Oh, you know? yeah. Okay. Now, by trusting in two things, is the person trusting a hundred percent? Wait a second. Wait a second. Okay. And see, this is the this is the goal of the free gracer. Teach them just believe and receive. The body of Christ gets redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble gets uh, gets underway. Guys like this are left behind to deceive people like this. And it's like, just believe and receive in a dispensation when it is faith and works. And then they come up and see, it's a seed to program them for future things. It's like, well, hey, and especially during the time of Jacob's trouble, once the body of Christ is out of here, and you got an idiot like this coming along saying this, it's like, well, hey, if you're believing in Jesus and keeping commandments, what is your trust in? It's divided, isn't it? Well, under and during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Okay? See, him bringing this up in this way is preparing this guy uh, for when we get left, when we get uh, taken out of the way and they get left behind and this kid starts to question, it's like, oh, don't worry. It's still, it's just believe and receive. Very subtle. Very subtle. Watch this, okay? Both. Jesus and their own good actions to go to heaven. Where would they end up? Now today, that's not required. I Faith and works not question. today. No. Okay. But. Now, by trusting in two things, is the person trusting 100% in Jesus or only 50%? 50%. Right. And trusting because 50%. Trust right. And if I said to you, I trust you 50%, am I really trusting you then? No. Nah. No, and so if someone's only trusting in Jesus fifty percent. They're not really yeah. trusting in Him, Dude, so therefore Jesus exactly. doesn't die for them. And they and see Him bringing that up when and this is supposed to be a salvific experience for that guy on the right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think perhaps maybe no, but see Him bringing it that up in the way He did is planting a seed for when they get left behind, where it does become. Faith and works. Dude's a goner. Going to take that mark of the beast in, the, in his right hand or in his forehead? Goner. Goner. That's the goal of easy believism. <clears throat> that once we, the body of Christ, are redeemed, they're going to be left behind preaching, just believe and receive, while the Hebraic Jews are going to be doing, you know, the works of the law. But during that dispensation, it is what? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus during the time of Jacob's trouble. Is that for today? Absolutely not. But see, that kid, that's what easy believism does. They're setting these people up to take the mark of the beast after we get out of here by saying it's by grace of faith from beginning to end. You see it demonstrated right there, guys. Look at those kids' eyes, man. Oh, let's continue. <clears throat> they end up in hell. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So think back at the beginning of this conversation. What did you think was going to get you into heaven? Good actions, bro. Good actions. Yeah. yeah. So nah, if you... Up, bro. Yeah. 
So if you had died before this chat began, where would you have ended up? Hell. hell. Right. Straight off by hell. Straight it would have hell. been. Yeah, the lake of fire. But if you died this very moment, where would you go? Probably yeah, heaven, heaven, heaven. Yeah, Not just heaven, probably right, heaven. Yeah. Or <laughs> you know, like uh, uh, the guy from Australia who he called on the name of the Lord a thousand times. There was a live stream where a bunch of guys who were meaning well, they coached that uh, dear guy to, uh, you know, call on the name of the Lord. They coached him. This, 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 that guy has been coached along. And, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Wicked. This, this kid is a devil. And again, you devil, I hope the Lord silences you. You wicked filth. Let's continue. Oh. Told you I was cranky. No, 100% heaven. Yeah, exactly. And why? Because I trust in God. Yeah, and what did he do for you? He died for our, Jesus died for our sin. That's Correct. the reason. Um, how do you know you're going How do you know you're saved? Because you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. You're sealed with the Holy Ghost. Um, <laughs> um was that the evidence? Okay. <clears throat> we trust on the Lord on what he did for us. Amen. But have you guys noticed thus far what has been lacking? We're all sinners. What's lacking? What's lacking here? Let me show you what's lacking. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. This is what the easy believest avoids. Personal accountability. That's why, that's why they love Romans 3. That's why they start like Elmer from New York. That's why they like to start at verse 23 in Romans 3. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is true. That is absolutely true. Yes, it is. But what's not being addressed here? Personal accountability. Personal responsibility. He's like, well, we're all sinners. And this and this is the problem with the easy believers. You confront them with this sooner or later with very little effort, every single one, without an exception that I've encountered. I'm not as bad as so-and-so. You haven't been broken. Th there's no brokenness here. And then see the easy believers to defend that. They go to the Philippian jailer who had godly sorrow. They say well, he had worldly sorrow. No, if he had worldly sorrow, he would have ah, killed himself. He had godly sorrow because Paul and Silas like, hey, whoa, okay. And they didn't say to him, you know, I, I, have you been broken? No, he was about to kill himself. If the Philippian jailer had worldly sorrow he would have been dead he had godly sorrow which led to salvation okay that's another thing that the easy believers likes to do to protect their stupid satanic doctrine there's no brokenness there's no personal responsibility and accountability and they're sure as hades is no fear of the lord here that's what's missing that's what's missing in the gospel of free grace. That's what's missing. They go to, they begin in Romans 3.23, so everyone can hide under the umbrella. Well, we're all sinners. But see, when a saint confronts them, that's, I'm not as bad as the classic which I've encountered. You think Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven, and you think I'm lost. And I answered the one guy's like, uh... I know you're lost. He didn't like that, and I didn't really care. Okay? I'm better than Jeffrey Dunn. Really, huh? 
This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And see, that is a quality resident in the fake. The, the woman thou gavest me to be with, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. Pointing the finger at some, see saints like we discuss. They can banter for a little while, but sooner or later that circle to try to justify themselves, a saint stops and takes responsibility. That's what's missing here, and look at those devil possessed eyes by this wicked little kid. Okay. I don't know how old he is, but it, it's, this, is, this is grotesque. This is why, saints, we are to hate easy believism, free grace, because of this. And this stupid kid, I, bless his heart and soul, and I mean that in a southern way, uh, he, he, and Tupac, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Let's continue. It's all because of him, what he's done for you. Man, that makes this conversation a turning point in your life, doesn't it? Oh, facts, bro. No, facts. Straight off. Straight off. No. That's encouraging. Now, how does this make you feel towards Jesus, knowing what he's done for you? Good, uh, good, actually, yeah. yeah. No, does it make you feel well, grateful towards Jesus? Oh, facts, bro. No, facts. Yeah. Like, it makes you love him. Just open up my eyes a bit more, bro, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's good. And because you now... You know, you're thankful to Jesus, you love him. What would you want to try and not do anymore? Just be a bad person, bro. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we want to try and avoid sin now. Yeah. That's what helps us not to swear and lie. And, and Now, see, unlike that idiot Tom, this kid is at, he's just like, well, okay, now we should try to live right, okay? This, uh, some easy believists do this. But see, when you start off on the wrong premise anyway, this is kind of like you pisseth against the wind. Okay? And lust and hate people and yeah. do things that he doesn't want us to do. Yeah. Greed. Yeah, exactly. Even we don't want to be smoking stuff that we shouldn't be, you know, because yeah, it makes us go out of our mind. Right. We don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, and the Bible is going to be really helpful, though, for you to help you stay on the right track. So do you have a Bible at home? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think great. I got it in um. Have you, dear saint, dear whoever you are, noticed that this kid didn't mention one verse of scripture or not even a Bible? Did you notice that? Not one word, not one verse of scripture. Not one. No, not one. And the guy on the right said to the devil guys, and look at them eyes, man, said to him, you're a scripture teacher. But yet, yet, this kid hasn't, has, he hasn't even quoted one verse of scripture. Even, dear sweetie pie Canadian talk show host would at least, at least he would at least use a verse of scripture. This kid didn't even use anything. Romans uh, 10. <coughs> Romans 10. Romans 10. 14. On to 17. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And, you know, uh, um, Elmer from New York. It, they, you know, they don't deal... It, Romans 10, 14 through 17 is talking about people such as myself, such as all saints who are in the ministry of reconciliation, and every saint is in the ministry of reconciliation, okay? And how shall they believe in, in him of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Men are supposed to be the preachers. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation, but men are supposed to be preachers. Deal with it there, sisters, okay? You sisters do, okay? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. 
For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This kid doesn't even use the Bible. He didn't quote one verse of scripture, and he is telling the other guy that he is saved. See how dangerous this is. And again, I can't get over how evil that kid's eyes are. I mean, Christy Burke's eyes were pretty dead. That guy, this kid, he's 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 got a devil in him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's continue. Come on. The key tonight, Chelsea. Brilliant, yeah. Well man, I definitely encourage you to read it. Maybe start in the book of John, which is three quarters of the way through. Um, and John, and, and praise the Lord, the book of John is good, it's great. When I talk to people, when the Lord saves them, where do I begin? Start in the book of Romans. Start in the book of Romans. Then, go to the Gospels. See, because... When you begin in the Gospels, a majority of the Gospel accounts are under the law. Hey, kid, when did the New Testament begin? And, and, and these guys are probably be these ones that, um, you know, who like to confuse covenant and testament. Okay, <laughs> they're two different things. Okay, again, the link for that will be in the description box. But when did the New Testament begin? Okay, when did the New Testament begin? Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9. Okay, and by the way, you stupid devils, I am not saying not to read the gospel accounts. Uh, when it comes to witnessing unto the lost, Okay, when it comes to witnessing unto the lost, you start with Romans. Because a majority of the gospel accounts, what the Lord said, were under the law. Under the law. When he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Doctrinally, before the death, burial, and resurrection... They were under the law. That is why the Sermon on the Mount is not doctrine for us today. Okay? Alright? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Verses 23 on to verse... Uh, where, where, where is that? Um, uh, well, let's begin at verse 18. Whereupon neither is the first... Te uh, excuse me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all messed up. Verses 15 <laughs> on to verse 18. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, not covenant. Uh, Hebrews 9, 15 on verse 18. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death, death of the testator. Hey, Tom, when you were asked when the New Testament began, you said at the Council of Nicaea, Woohoo! Warning! No! When did the New Testament begin? Okay? Verse 17. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. So when did the New Testament begin? With the death of the testator. So... I mean, going to John, okay, for someone who 
apparently has just been saved. It's like, where, where do I begin? Book of Romans. Book of Romans. Then go to the Gospel of John. Okay? Start in the Book of Romans. Okay? All right? Because the New Testament begins with the death of the testator. And before the death of the testator, the death testator is Jesus Christ, what he was saying was under the law in context of him offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. And their faith was not in the death, burial, and resurrection, but as him, on him as king of the Jews. Okay? Let's continue. It just gives you a really good introduction to the life of yeah. Jesus. What he said, what he did. Right? And how often... Yeah, oh, no, for sure, bro. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> and how often do you think you should read the Bible? Right, every night, bro. Before yeah. I go to bed or every morning for right. the day or whenever. whenever. Brilliant. At least every day, read at least one chapter of the Bible is my encouragement. And that's going to help you stay on the right track and also help you not fall into sin and temptation as much. Right? I like that, bro. I like that. Yeah, but also think about your family and friends. If you were to ask them why they think they'll go to heaven, what do you think their answer would be? Based on good actions or like, right. yeah, like we said before, bro, yeah. I'm so sure. where are they going if they died today? Hell. So what could you do to help them? Open up their eyes a bit more and, you know, teach them like you taught me, bro. There we go, shit. No, kid. You teach your family like this devil teaches you. Your kid, you're still going to hell. You're guiding them to hell. And the message, that would be one of the most loving things you could do for them. It's a good plan. And also, uh, let me ask you, does someone need to get baptized to go to heaven? No. You're right, because that's our actions, and we're not saved yeah, by exactly. our actions. Yeah. yeah. Does someone have to pray or go to church to go to heaven? Prayer is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. You just just make a mental choice. You see? You see? When you have been broken and take responsibility and have the hell scared out of you, you 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 can't wait. You want to. Lord, save me. But see, this is easy believism. Free grace. Prayer is a work. Call on the name of the Lord is a work. And this devil led this, is, has led this kid on to hell. Making him twofold more the child of hell than that devil possessed kid himself. No, these are good things though. The, like yeah. baptism, going to church and praying, these are great yeah. things, but they just don't save us. So yeah. we just do them to say thank you to Jesus. Yep. Uh, I just say thank you for me saving myself. Uh. Much, yeah. Do you go to a church yourself? I do not, no. No. Have you ever been one to one before? Yeah, my great great grandmother used to take me. Look. The body of Christ is the church of God. Brother Alexander B. Hartley, I'll link the yes, uh, Wednesday's video where the, that's in there, okay? Um, church is not building. Church is body. Okay? All right? Uh, yeah, so he leads them into a false gospel, false salvation, a false Jesus, and telling him to go to a phallus house. Oh boy. This is how Satan is damning people today. Through easy believism, free grace, antinomianism, whatever you want to call it. And, and like I said, look at that kid's eyes. <laughs> okay? Time, bro. Wow, that's, that's cool, man. Now it may, it'll make a whole lot more sense now that you know this message. Oh yeah, for sure. Bro. Right. Yeah. And in terms of, of, don't just go to any church. Find one that actually teaches what we've talked about. 
Because some churches will tell you that it's based on your good deeds that get you to heaven. Yeah, no, no, and that's no, not a good but, church. Yeah. Um, so yeah, false yeah. messages on that, yeah. No church, people, no church building is good. Okay? No church building is good. They're not of God. Okay? Exactly, exactly. So be, be, be careful in, in finding a good one that is going to help, helpfully teach you the message. But do you have any questions you want to ask? No, thank you, though, bro. No, thank you, though. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. That, that's it. We, we went through that entire video. Um, went through the, and like I said, um, the, the link for that video will be in the description box. Then he didn't even quote a Bible. Then use one uh, thing of scripture, and what was left out? What was left out? Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. The devils also believe and tremble. Personal accountability. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. We're all sinners. We are. But see, Romans 1 and 2 and 3. See, the Jesus of Scripture does this. Puts his finger on that one thing that lacked. There's no personal accountability. There's no brokenness, no contrition, and definitely no fear. What was left out? And see, when the Lord gives me an opportunity, or even my wife, you know what we do? You know what I do? As it is written, and see, the antinomian is free grace, pond scum, devil easy, believe us, puke. They hate this. Because this does this. Where the gospel you just saw, which is not the true gospel, does does one of these things where everyone can hide under it say I'm not as bad as so and so Romans 3 10 on to verse 18 as it is written there is none righteous no not one there is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after God they are all gone out of the way they are together become unprofitable there is none that doeth good no not one their throat is an open sepulchre with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their quays. In the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. There is no fear of God in any of those, especially that devil kid's eyes, dude. And this is pervasive. This, what you saw, is what is going on in Christianity in the majority today. If you trust that, what we saw, you're going to hell. Come here. It's time you wake up. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Watch out for this, uh, what, what, what was this punk's uh, channel? Um, God, uh, God, God, get God net, or, uh, hold on a second, let me, uh, let me go back to that and get out of this. What was his channel? Uh, need God net. This kid is a devil. He is a antinomianist, free grace, easy believism devil. His, his eyes, his eyes give him away. Um, he's preaching another gospel and another Jesus. Avoid this devil and look at him. He's got one hundred six uh, uh, thousand subscribers. And uh, when did this little punk start? Come on. Uh, when did he start? Oh, and of course he's on. All the, you know, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, 
and he's got a lot of videos. Uh, 16 many started in July on July 10th, 2020. So in four years, he's got uh, a little, uh, a little uh, under a quarter of a million subscribers. You know why? You know why? Hmm. You know why this kid's so popular? Because the free grace thing, nobody wants the uh, true gospel because it hurts. But you know why this? You know why this kid's got as many as he does? Hmm. You know why? It's very simple. And he didn't use one. Li well, no, he didn't even quote a Bible. 1 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned on to fables. Easy believism is a fable. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, going to get this one uploaded. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, be links for you in the description box. Thank you. Watch out for, what was that again? Watch out for needgod.net. And hey kid, you haven't seen this? The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you and I hope he shuts you down. I hope he silences you. Because you're leading people to hell, kid. God save you.